This is the history of Lenore High School, 1907 through 1977, and hopefully this book will be reprinted in the summer of 2021. You can check with our museum in Lenore, North Carolina, Caldwell Heritage Museum on Vaden Street, to see when this book will be available. Missing pages are blank pages. This book will be much easier to read on a large screen TV. Please pause and read. The purpose of my feeble attempt at narration is because so many senior citizens don't have a device or maybe don't have a device large enough to read the print. Therefore, my narration. Ladies and gentlemen, the alma mater. Lenore's Preschool. This painted frame structure provided access to the three R's to Lenore children in the days before the graded or public schools were started. It was located on West College Avenue near the Bluebell plant. In Here Will I Dwell, page 171 by Nancy T. Alexander, it is stated in the 1870s, the Wilson Academy was conducted in Lenore by J.R. Wilson, who lived nearby in a large brick house where the present Lenore High School is now located. In 1889, E.L. Barnes took over the management and called it the Lenore High School. Note, the house pictured above was torn down some years ago. It was located on West College Avenue. Several houses west of the present College Avenue Baptist Church and was across from the Mac Cook Stadium. This is the Lenore Graded School and was located where the present First Baptist Church is on North Main Street in Lenore, North Carolina. Site selected, The Weekly News, June 12, 1903. The graded school trustees have selected and taken an option on the lot on Main Street known as the Small Lot, and we are informed that they have decided upon this lot as the location of the graded school building. This is in many respects an admirable location and will meet the need of the school in every way. One could have wished for a larger and more pretentious grounds, but this lot is ample and to have gotten more land would mean an increase in cost at the sacrifice or perhaps of other things of greater importance. We think the selection made is well, being near the center of the school district, surrounded by the three sides by streets and free from encumbrance of buildings that would of necessity be sacrificed in erecting the school building. Note, in the local paper dated October 19, 1920, it was stated in the personals that Mr. James Small of Mooresville visited his mother, Mrs. Elizabeth Small in Lenore, and that he had lived where the graded school building now stands on North Main Street. For the record, on October 30th, 
1903, Book 37, page 302, Caldwell County Register of Deeds. J.K. Moose and his wife, Georgia Moose, deeded to the board of the graded school trustees, Lot 10, on the original plot of town of Lenore, known as the John Small Lot, in Lower Creek Township for $1,100. The lot was bounded by North Main Street, Ash, Mulberry, and an alley. This lot number 10 was added in November 1903 when the town of Lenore, signed by J.V. McCall Mayor, deeded to the board of the graded school trustees a strip of land adjoining Main Street, Mulberry Street, and the graded school lot. The land had been conveyed to the town of Lenore by H.C. Hamilton. The new Lenore graded school had ten recitation rooms, plenty of hall space on the first and second floors, a reception room, the superintendent's private apartment, and a large auditorium. All rooms were furnished with furniture which corresponded to the grades which are taught in them. The auditorium is furnished with opera chairs on the first floor with raised seats on the second. Mr. A. E. Woltz was superintendent and for the information of the public published a course of study in the local newspaper December 1903 previous to the opening of the school in January 1904. Much of this page is not directly related to the Lenore Graded School. Course of Study, Lenore Graded School by A. E. Waltz, Superintendent from the Weekly News, December 25, 1903. For the information of the public, I published the following course of study which will be used in the Lenore Graded Schools. The Holmes series of readers, as well as the other books adopted by the state, will be used also. I request the parents to wait until their children have been assigned to their respective grades before providing books for them. The school will open at the earliest possible time, and it is to be hoped that every father and mother in Lenore will look upon it as their school and will feel a personal interest and everything connected therewith. Grade 1 New Education Reader Number 1 Lee's Reader Number 1 Language and Number Work Grade 2 New Education Reader Number 2 Lee's Reader Number 2 Big People and Little People of Other Lands Language Work Primary Arithmetic Addition and Subtraction, Writing, Drawing Book Number 1, Grade 3, Lee's Readers Number 3, Great Americans for Little Americans, Language Work, Primary Arithmetic Completed, Writing, Drawing Book, and Old Stories of the East, Grade 4, Lee's Reader Number 4, Old Stories of the Old North State, the White Doe, Arithmetic Intermediate, Language Work, Hyde's First Book, Geography, Study of Maps, Spelling, Writing, Drawing Book Number 3. This page also has a lot of local news not relevant to Lenore High School. Grade 5, North Carolina History, Primary History of the United States, Arithmetic, English, Grammar, Written Composition, Geography, Bird Life, Hiawatha, Psychology, Writing and Drawing. Grade 6, Hansel's Advanced History, Biographical Stories of Great Americans, Literary Selections, Arithmetic, Advanced in Modern English, Modern English Grammar, Studies in Nature and Language Lessons, Geography, Psychology, and Agriculture, and Studies in Civil Government. 
Grade 7, English History, Math, Elementary Algebra, Latin, English Language, Composition, Sketching, Autobiography of Benjamin Franklin, Physical Geography, U.S. History, Writing in English. Grade 8, History, Elementary Algebra, College Algebra, Latin, Reading, English Composition. Grade 9, History, Math, Algebra, Geometry, Latin, English Composition. Grade 10, History, Math, Geometry, Arithmetic, Latin. The Lenore Graded School, January the 8th, 1904, from the Weekly News. The Lenore Graded School will open next Monday in temporary quarters. The Fawcett Schoolhouse, the old public school building, and possibly elsewhere if need be. This is an event in Lenore's history of which all should feel proud. There will be ten full grades, and if students far enough advanced come to take them, and those taking the entire course will be prepared to enter the state university or any of the higher colleges of the state. The important question for you parents to decide is, what will you do about your children? Your boy is as bright as the other boy, but if you let him grow up in ignorance, he will have no chance in the battle of life. For in this age of education, none but the intellectually enlightened apply. Years ago, one could make the fight with little education, but the times have changed, and your child will have to face greater obstacles than the parents surmounted. He has every advantage to procure an education free, and if he doesn't, it is your fault, and you should make every sacrifice to enable him to attend school every day. Every father and mother in this town should feel like the school belongs to them and take a personal interest in everything connected with the school. Now it is up to you. Will you let that boy of yours run on the street of the town and be subject to the temptations that beset every youth? Or will you send him to school where he can be kept out of mischief, but learn something that will make him a useful and honored citizen? Get the children up early Monday morning, clean them up, and get them off to school on time, and keep them there from the very first day till the close of this term and you will see the results that will pay you for your efforts. Grade School Opening, January 15, 1904, from the Weekly News. That was an inspiring scene at the courthouse last Monday when 270 school children assembled there to be enrolled and assigned to their particular grades in their school and to be welcomed by Professor Waltz, their superintendent, and others. Their bright faces all showing an eager thirst for an education presented a picture to be remembered. Professor Y.D. Moore, County Superintendent of Schools, said it was the happiest moment of his life. Edmund Jones, J.R. Wilson, Professor Waltz, and Professor Moore all made short addresses to the public, and it was altogether an enthusiastic occasion, marking a district milestone in the progress of Lenoran vicinity. Since the opening day, other pupils have been coming in, and the enrollment has already reached 283. Lenore Graded School, location North Main Street. A few historical facts about our school. The Lenore Graded School was opened in the fall of 1904. The grades were scattered in different locations of the town, the fourth grade, for example, being held in Captain Fawcett residence, with Miss Laura Fawcett teaching it. The lot that the first school building was placed on cost $1,100. The building cost about $9,000. This soon had to be enlarged until the entire basement, 
almost, was utilized for school rooms and part of the auditorium was cut off for the same purpose. Public school affairs were held in the old opera house for years, which would be the Hinkle Opera House. The present building was used first in January 1923. This cost about $250,000. It was found inadequate within two or three years and the present board decided in future to follow the ward plan of enlarging the schools. The first unit of this is now in process of construction in East Lenore. The original school board consisted of J.V. McCall, J.B. Atkinson, Chairman, Lawrence Wakefield, Dr. Sam Shell, A.N. Todd, W.H. Harrington, J.R. Wilson. Since that time, the following have served at some time or another upon this board in addition to the board now in service. T.F. Seahorn, Edmund Jones, C.B. McNary, C.T. Squires, M.V. Shearer, Victor Beach, W.T. Beach, W.A. Watson, K.A. Link, G.F. Harper. The following have been the superintendents of Lenore Public Schools. A.E. Waltz, J.L. Harris, E.C. Ruffin, R.S. Sisk, G.O. Rogers, W.S. Howe, C.S. Warren. And this is from the 1927 annual. Lenore Graded School, Lenore, North Carolina. 1923 through 1977. 1923 new building on Willow Street. W.S. Haug was superintendent. May 19, 1923, the Lenore News Topic. Superintendent W.S. Haug, Principal J. Aris Castle, have been re-elected to their respective positions by the school board. New building located on Old Wilson property. On August 10, 1920, L.J. Wilson and George W. Wilson, executors of the estate of R.J. Wilson, deceased L.J. Wilson, widow, and others, deeded to the board of the graded school trustees of Lenore Corporation created under and by virtue of Chapter 132, Private Laws, 1903 of Caldwell County, State of North Carolina. Certain land being the former home place of J.R. Wilson, late of Caldwell County, now occupied by George O. Shakespeare, and the premises heretofore occupied by J.M. Bernhardt as a lumber yard. For $22,900 and other considerations mentioned herein, which were that George Shakespeare holds a lease upon a part of the premises, including the house, which is of record in Caldwell County, and which he has agreed to surrender on or before the 15th day of October, 1920, upon the payment of the sum of $400. This property was bounded by the lands of the steel cotton mill up the bank of a branch with the line of Lenore Mills to a stake near the bridge in the south line of Spring Street or Harper Avenue, then with the south edge to a stake in the southeast intersection of Harper Avenue and Willow Street, then with the west edge of Willow Street to the intersection of Willow Street to College Avenue, then with College Avenue to the beginning at Steel Cotton Mill. From the Lenore News Topic, Microfilm Record, 1922 through 1923. The school on Main Street closed for holidays will resume work January 3rd in the new building. December 21st, 1922, the Lenore News Topic. School closed for holidays. The Lenore Graded School will close today for the Christmas holidays and will resume work again on Wednesday, January the 3rd, in the new building located on the old Wilson property. On the resumption of school in January, two teachers will be added. Miss Annie King of Denver, North Carolina, first grade, Miss Elizabeth Carlton of Statesville, North Carolina, to the third grade section, 
including art and music teachers and superintendents, there will be 26 teachers in the school next year, 18 teachers in elementary grades, and 5 teachers in high school. During the first part of January, when the keys to the new building are formally turned over to the school, there will be a housewarming. A program will be prepared, and some prominent speakers will make addresses. December 28, 1922, Moving Week for the Lenore School, January 4, 1923, School Reopened in the New Building, March 16, 1923, Formal Opening of the New Lenore School, Exercises Next Friday Evening with Speaking and with Music by Legion Band. Lenore's new $150,000 school building will be formally turned over to the taxpayers next Friday, March 23rd. The exercises will begin at 7.30 o'clock. Special music for this occasion will be furnished by the American Legion Band. There will be a few short addresses by representatives of the different organizations in the city, including the Ministerial Association, the Chamber of Commerce, the Women's Club, and the alumni, the County School Board of Education, and others. The speaking part of the program, however, is not the main feature. The general public should take this opportunity to get acquainted with the teachers and with each other. The school committee and the teachers are anxious that all patrons take advantage of this meeting. Go and take your friends. Superintendent Haug has requested that all alumni of the graded school be present and assemble in one of the rooms near the auditorium a little before the time for the opening exercises. By alumni is meant all former students and graduates of the school. They are requested to be there by 7.15 o'clock. March 27, 1923, Housewarming at New Lenore School. Several take part in an interesting program, a good crowd present. Friday night, a housewarming was held at the New Lenore School Building when the keys of the building were officially turned over to the school by the Board of Trustees. The program opened with music by the American Legion Band, which is being directed by James Harper, and was followed by a prayer by Rev. R. L. Isbell. Mrs. J. L. Nelson was then introduced by Superintendent W. S. Haug as being the Lady of the White House. Mrs. Nelson is one of the most loyal and faithful friends of the graded school. Several years ago, she presented a standard reference work containing 29 volumes to the school. Since that time, the World War has been fought and won, and numerous other things of interest and importance have taken place. This being the case, Mrs. Nelson said that she did not want these important things to be missing in the reference books, and she presented three additional volumes containing the happenings since 1910. The original set was donated by Mrs. Nelson in memory of her father, Dr. Scroggs, and she said she wanted to continue furnishing this extension service in honor of his memory. In closing, Mrs. Nelson said that the school had moved into its new quarters and left North Main Street. A pall of loneliness hung over the place. The old school building is located just across the street from the home of Mrs. Nelson, and it is safe to say that she misses the school children in no small degree. Superintendent Haug accepted the three additional volumes of the reference work for the school with a great deal of appreciation. In doing this, he stated that the school needed many more friends like Mrs. Nelson. He also stated that in order to be a number A high school, 500 books would have to be in the library. At the present time, there are 299 books. He made a strong appeal to the friends of the school to furnish the necessary number of books to the school library so as to place them in the A class. After another selection by the band, W.J. Lenore, recently elected chairman of the Board of Education, 
was called on for a talk. This building, with all of its equipment and conveniences, would be a credit to any town in the state of North Carolina, Mr. Lenore said. The fact that it is here is evidence that the town will keep up the important place on the educational map. Not many of you can remember as far back as 50 years ago, but this town has always been considered an educational town. If you will look up the records of the history of the town, you will find that even then there were three splendid educational institutions of more than statewide reputation in the town of Lenore. These institutions were Finley High School, which was run by Captain E.W. Fawcett and Mr. Dixon as an assistant. It had boys here from states as far west as Texas. He then told of an old negress passing by the school one day when several of the students were studying their Greek and reading it aloud. She hurried on and told the boss that two of those strange boys were up there a-cussing and a-threatening to kill me. What did they say, she was asked. Alpha, Beta, etc. Then there was the Kirkwood School fifty years ago, Mr. Lenore continued, with Miss Emma Rankin as principal, and a girl in that day considered herself fortunate to have her guidance. Davenport College was here fifty years ago, and it alone remains. It is progressing and growing better and better, and it is a pleasant thought for us to liken it to Tennyson's book and hope it will go on forever. Then there was a lapse, and we come to a period about 20 years ago when the greatest school building was erected. It was one of the greatest interests of our town and recognized as one of the best institutions of the state. But the town has outgrown the old school, and we now have this magnificent building on six acres of ground and so built that the unit after unit can be added as room may be needed. We have a splendid superintendent and board of trustees. They are determined that this school shall be second to none in North Carolina. Mayor V.D. Geyer was then introduced by Superintendent Haug, who stated that his subject would be the burdened taxpayer who paid for the chairs, erected the house, and was responsible for its being there. Mr. Geyer stated in the beginning that he thought the meeting together in the building for a housewarming was a very fine thing. The people would come there and see each other and would go home with a better feeling for having been there, and he was sure that when taxpaying time came, they would not mind so much the paying of taxes. Of course, there will be some pessimistic taxpayers who have not seen the vision and will let go of their money grudgingly, but they will be in the minority. Mr. Geyer said that he had hoped none of the children would have to go three miles in the mud to school as he had done. The speaker then mentioned the citizenship of Lenore. He said there was no better citizenship to be found anywhere than in Lenore. As has been suggested by Mr. Lenore, this town has been known since its beginning as an educational town and a town of Christianity. Mr. Geyer continued, Two things that are absolutely inseparable for the making of good citizenship. We want to see that the town of Lenore is growing, progressing, and going forward at a greater rate, perhaps today, than in all of her history. We taxpayers are going to pay for it. We cannot get anything in this world that is worthwhile unless it costs us money. The times demand that we spend more money than we did 50 years ago. Our citizenship demands better things, better schools, better roads, better churches, better preachers, better teachers, than they did 50 years ago. All our taxpayers want these days is value received for their money. Mrs. E. F. Reed was then introduced as representing the Woman's Club. This organization has been speaking for itself in good deeds for the last 18 years, 
Mrs. Reed said. At first it was known as the Little Town Improvement Society and then for many years as the Woman's Betterment Association. But we have grown dignified of late and we are now known as the Woman's Club. The policy of the club has always been conservative and thereby regain the respect of the men of the town. We have received the most courteous treatment and cooperation from the men of the town and the school authorities, and it is our opinion that there are no finer men anywhere than we have right here in Lenore. I am sure that I voice the sentiment of the 120 members of the Women's Club when I say that every day, in every way, we are striving to make our town and school better and better. Mrs. Reed then told a story she had heard the preceding day of a certain pastor of a certain church, not in Lenore, who was often called on for a talk. He always got up and said he was not prepared. One Sunday morning, when the exercises had been particularly long for one little boy, he was called on for a speech. He got up, rubbed his hands, saying he hardly knew what to say. The little boy in the back called out and said, Well, say amen and sit down. Lee Foy Tuttle was then introduced as representing the youth of the school. He said, This school means more to us in our present school life than it will be to others for we have been looking forward for a number of years to the time when we would have a new school building. We have been crowded up in the old school building for so long that we have not yet become accustomed to our new building. It seems just like a dream to us, and we want to express our thanks to the school and to those who made this building possible, and we do thank them. V.H. Beach, the treasurer of the Board of Trustees, was next introduced. In beginning, Mr. Beach said he had represented one of the most peaceful bodies the sun had ever shone on. Since 1913, he had been a member of the Board of Trustees and on every question that has come up, he said. The Board has always been unanimous in their decision about it. There have been many important questions during these ten years, he said. You have been called on twice to vote for school bonds, and you have responded wonderfully. This building has been in the minds of every man on the school board for ten years. It was the dream of the board. They all planned for this when they were members of the board. Reverend C.T. Squires dreamed of it, and his dream was so loud that he told us about it. I want to thank the citizenship of the town of Lenore for their hearty cooperation in every request made, and it is because you were interested that this building is here tonight. Mr. Beach then delivered the keys to the building to Superintendent Haug. He showed them the smallest key and said it was the most important one of all. It was the key that unlocked the hearts of the citizenship of every man, woman, and child in this school district. Mr. Haug accepted the key with some very fitting remarks. G.F. Harper was called on for a few remarks, after which the audience was dismissed. The band played while the assemblage marched out. An invitation was extended for all to visit the different classrooms. Band building added in 1937. Following the main building in 1922, the band building was dedicated November 2, 1937. The Mountaineer, December 1, 1932, reported a senior band composed of about 50 members, while the junior band for beginners has about 20 members. The band has also obtained scholarships for a number of Lenore boys to well-known schools and colleges. The Mountaineer, February 1, 1933, printed an article on Kermit Bowley, composer of the New School Song and assistant director of the Lenore High School Band. Kermit was a member of the class of 1930 but did not graduate at Lenore High School. As he enrolled as a student at Culver Military Institute for the 1929-1930 year, 
His salary was paid by Mr. Harper, and according to Mr. George Kirsten, it was some years before the school board began paying salaries of the assistant directors. Some of the assistant directors who followed were Leonard V. Moretta and George W. Kirsten. Both were natives of New Jersey and both played the trumpet. And then there were Robert Kepler, R.H. Milligan, J.T. Lenore, John Kaufman, Captain Ralph Ostrom, Francis Dale Grayville, John Miller, and possibly others. Mr. Harper was one of the founders of the American School Band Association, and since 1935, and he also had been a member of the American Bandmasters Association, and in 1955 was elected president of this renowned association at their annual convention held in Elkhart, Indiana in February. At that time, he had been the only high school band director to serve as president. In 1958, Mr. Harper retired as director of the Lenore High School Band and was named Director Emeritus. Mr. Bernard B. Hirsch became director. Band Memorial Library. In 1977, when Lenore High School merged with West Caldwell High School, a special room was set aside in which a band memorial library and museum was established. Mr. George Kirsten states that the library contains memorabilia from the Lenore High School band building from 1924 to 1977. Pictures date from 1926. There is a complete music library along with awards received and an exhibit of all uniforms. Visitation to the Band Memorial Library is encouraged. Open House and Dedication Year Construction 1922 Main Building 1937 James Harper Band Building 1948 Gymnasium and Remodeling of Auditorium 1952 Cook Stadium Stand and Press Box 1954 Industrial Arts Building 1962 Addition Joining the James C. Harper Band Building and Main Building Providing a Library Instrument Repair Shop 12 Practice Rooms and an Unfinished Top Floor to the Band Building and 11 Classrooms including a new Home Economics department to the main building. From 1962 open house and dedication program. Sunday afternoon November 18, 1962 3 o'clock p.m. October 1st 1932 the Mountaineer. Scrapbook records history of Lenore High School Band. The Lenore High School Band has a very unique project in the scrapbook which it began several years ago and which is now almost through the sixth large volume. From the day the band was organized, the directors carefully filed such things as newspaper accounts of the work and the public appearances of the band, programs played, photographs of the band, and its appearances, magazine articles, and letters from important people who wrote commending the band and its work. In time, the mass of this material became large and unwieldy, and it was hard to find quickly the item wanted. The scrapbook was started, and then the first item in it was a letter from the Desert Kendall Post of the American Legion in Lenore offering a set of band instruments to the school. This letter went on to state the conditions under which the gift was made. There follows the letter from the school board accepting the gift and the newspaper clippings commenting on the new venture. In order come program, accounts of concerts, magazine articles, and all the rest. In time there appears the programs and newspaper accounts of the first state contest attended 
and when the volume covering the year 1927 is reached and the band made its first trip to the University of North Carolina to play for the Virginia Carolina Thanksgiving football game, there comes a regular deluge of letters from prominent people expressing their pleased surprise at the results. High spots were the trips to Charlotte to play for the automobile races. There was no band in Charlotte schools at that time, and programs and newspaper clippings give the details of the trips. Another memorable date recorded is a visit to the Gentry Brothers Circus when the circus people arranged for the band to march in the parade and in return became the guest of the circus. No host ever lived up to the idea of hospitality than did the circus folks on this occasion. Not only was the band uniform a ticket of admission to the main performance, but to almost anywhere else that the band chose to go. From cook tents and blacksmith shop to the office of the general manager himself, no circus program of the date was preserved, but the newspaper clipping tells the story. As the pages are turned, the letters of commendation show a great increase and begin to come from more and more distant points from Lenore. The last three governors of North Carolina have letters there and one governor of Virginia. A recent secretary of the Navy sends a very enthusiastic letter over his impressions of the band at the Virginia Carolina Thanksgiving game. College presidents from North Carolina and Virginia and the college deans came one after the other. A professor of education at the University of Pittsburgh writes to ask permission to use a picture of the band in a book he is about to publish. A school superintendent in New Mexico wants to start a band in his high school and writes to know how it should be done. A band director in Mr. Henry Ford's River Rough High School sends his warm good wishes and the director of the National Champion Scene High School Band of Chicago does the same. Letters from the musicians on the Pacific Coast from Detroit, Cleveland, Ann Arbor, New York, Oklahoma, Louisiana, and other distant points are included. A letter from a musician in Hamburg, Germany states that he had read an American musical journal containing an account of the band in Lenore, and he wishes photographs of the band to show in lectures to the Hamburg High School students. Former Lenore citizens who have gone to foreign countries still read the Lenore papers, and they are enthused over the accounts of the band and write in to say so. Brazil, Africa, the USSR, Canada, and others are represented in this list. Prominent musicians are probably the largest group included. Edward F. Goldman, president of the American Bandmasters Association and director of the official band of New York City, sends a very cordial letter. The leaders of the U.S. Marine Band, which plays in the White House, and of the U.S. Navy Band, send congratulations over the first championship in Class A when the Lenore organization voluntarily went over into the higher classification. The president of the Bandmasters Association of Virginia sends a letter, and school band directors are frequent in the kind things they have to say. The director of the Royal Marine Band of Italy sends large photographs of the band to hang in the band room at the high school. The secretary to the president of Czechoslovakia sends a photograph of the leading orchestra of his nation. The cabinet secretaries of other crowned heads write by command of their majesties to send personal regards to the members of the band. Meanwhile, pictures are included which show the growth of the band and also of boys who are band members. The little freckle-faced freshman of a few years back will appear in a later volume 
as a big strapping senior ready to break into the ranks of the band in the college he is about to enter. From a tiny handful of students who occupy a few lonesome chairs in the center of the stage of the auditorium, the later pictures tell of a growth in size and instrumentation which spreads way to the limits of the stage. In fact, the standard stage scenery may not be used on the account of space and the background becomes the curtains which may be pulled back and allow a greater floor space. Backstage to right and left wings, additional row of chairs must be crowded in. The magazine articles grow more and more frequent as pages are turned. Most of them seem to be in musical and school journals, but others appear in such publications as the Kiwanis Magazine, and all are of national circulation. One American Legion Monthly has a large cover page and article to go with it, and it is found in High School Life, which is the official publication of the United States Department of Education. Usually the front cover of the magazine as well as the table of contents and the article itself are pasted in. Thus all necessary information about the article is at hand or can easily be obtained. The last things pasted in so far are the accounts of the recent band trip to Boone in the rain and a page from the school musician in which a picture of the Lenore Band appears on the center page spread. It is up to the band boys to make history. The scrapbook will record it. The Captain James C. Harper Memorial Library, 300 West Caldwell Drive, Lenore, North Carolina, 28645. John R. Craig, Administrator, 1893 through 1986. Advisory Board, Kenneth Roberts, L.C. Morrison, Bernard B. Hirsch, George Kirsten, John Miller, James C. Harper, Jr., John R. Craig. Grand Tribute to the Captain. The Captain James C. Harper Memorial Band Library officially opens Wednesday afternoon at West Caldwell High School. The man who led the Lenore High School Band to an unprecedented 33 consecutive superior ratings in North Carolina is honored and remembered at this historical library. Celebrating the opening are, from the left, seated, former Lenore High Band Directors George Kirsten, Bernard Hurst, John Miller, and James C. Harper, Jr., Captain Harper's son. Standing are Kenneth Roberts, Superintendent of Schools, John Craig, West Caldwell Band Director, Camilla Graber, High Brighton Band Director, Arden Carson, South Caldwell Band Director, and L.C. Morrison, Principal at West Caldwell. Page 20. This, of course, is the front of Lenore High School, Lenore, North Carolina. Lenore High School, Lenore, North Carolina, February the 1st, 1933. The photo to the right at the top is Clarence Shaw Warren, Superintendent, 1925 through 1945, and below him is Mr. H. Claude Sisk, Superintendent, 1945 through 1950, and this is from the Mountaineer. Superintendent Warren explains eight months term. Curtail term will not affect the rating of school for the 1933 graduates. At a recent meeting of the Board of Trustees of the Lenore City Schools, it was decided to shorten the school term this year to eight months. There had been a feeling for several months that this step might become necessary, but the Board postponed definite action until it was seen clearly that it would be impossible for us to run the full nine months and at the same time meet our financial obligations. Most of you who read the columns of the Mountaineer do not realize how serious a thing it is for a school district or a county 
or any other local unit of government to fail to meet its financial obligations promptly. Promptly meaning the exact day on which they fall due. Defaulting in the matter of meeting principal and interest on school bonds would make it almost impossible for this district to sell bonds at any future date. It is a serious matter when an individual fails to pay his debts, but the consequences are even more far-reaching in the case of a unit of government. In 1903, the newly created Lenore Graded School District sold $13,000 in bonds to pay for the first high school built in Lenore. It stood on the site now occupied by the First Baptist Church. Those bonds were 30-year bonds and will fall due on January 1st. The local school officials have had them in mind all along and have kept the tax rate at a point where with normal collections a small surplus would have accrued each year in sufficient amount to take care of this $13,000 bond issue. The universal economic downswing has manifested itself almost decidedly in the inability of folks to pay their taxes promptly. The result is a probable shortage. Bonds and interest and current bills could be met if tax collections were normal or even nearly so. Such obligations cannot be met with uncollected taxes. The student body should know that it is not the policy of the school board to shorten the term permanently. It was necessary to meet this emergency in the only practical way. The temporary curtailment of the school term will not affect the standing of the school nor the standing of the graduates in 1933. We are a member in good standing of the Southern Association of Secondary Schools and Colleges. We are likely to lose our standing in that group if we have another eight months term next year. However, that matter has not been decided yet. Some concessions will probably be made to tide over the depression. Those in position to know do not feel that there is any cause for alarm. On the contrary, they feel that some way things will be worked out where schoolwork will not be curtailed and our school standing will not be jeopardized. The student body can make a most important contribution in these trying times by trying earnestly and cheerfully to do what is required of us. Board of Trustees, E.C. McCall, Chairman, W.E. Alexander, Vice Chairman, J.B. Houston, Treasurer, G.T. Krull, P.E. Hedrick, R. Carter Powell, W.J. Spainauer, Lenore Public Schools, J.G. Hagerman, Superintendent, Lenore, North Carolina, Principal Central High School, F.W. Lentz, Central Elementary, A.G. Nelson, East Harper Elementary, G.N. Kincaid, West Lenore Elementary, L.B. Robinson, October 23, 1953. To the citizens of Lenore, we are thankful for the support of the school program in Lenore by the parent-teacher associations, the Chamber of Commerce, civic organizations, the press and radio, business, industry, and other groups interested in providing adequate instruction for the children of our district. The Business Education Day, sponsored on September 16th by the Chamber of Commerce, was a distinct contribution to progress. The board concept of American education is to develop the art of using all of our resources advantageously it is our aim of the school system to develop in each pupil a basis for civic competence educational flexibility 
social understanding, occupational efficiency, home loyalty, religious consciousness, and growth through leisure time opportunities. Good schools make better communities. Your school administration is endeavoring to furnish the kind of leadership that will keep Lenore schools apace with the educational requirements of the individual children, the governing citizens of tomorrow. Sincerely yours, J.G. Hageman. Pupils attend one of the following schools. West Lenore grades 1 through 6, enrollment 370. East Harper grades 1 through 6, enrollment 410. Central Elementary, also known as Lenore Junior High, grades 6 through 8, enrollment 340. Lenore High, grades 9 through 12, enrollment 452. Friedman, grades 1 through 12, enrollment 440. West End grades 1 through 6, enrollment 102. Total enrollment 2114, enrollment 10 years ago, 1961. Expected enrollment in 1958, 2256. There are 83 teachers in the public schools of Lenore, 56 elementary, 27 high school. Your teachers are well trained. Teachers went to work three days before pupils reported this year in order that some professional study could be done and plans and organization could be perfected for better conduct of the schools. Thirteen teachers and our elementary supervisor hold master's degrees from colleges and universities. Practically all other teachers are college graduates. The three R's are emphasized. Your children grow in schools and understanding. Some of the hardest jobs teachers have are the following. The cooperation of all parents and community agencies is solicited to the end that these jobs will be made easier. 1. Selling the pupil on the need and value of working on lessons until mastery is obtained. 2. Getting pupils to discriminate between the important and frivolous things and give priority to the important. 3. Developing in the pupils ambition to excel and succeed. And a photo of Mr. J.G. Hageman, Superintendent, 1950 through 1974. End of page 22 and the end of part 1.